Coming up tonight on Game All Night, Mandy Hutchinson of To Die For Games. This Week and Each Week is brought to you by Game Toppers. Upgrade your... Coming up tonight on Game All Night, Mandy Hutchinson of To Die For Games. This Week and Each Week is brought to you by Game Toppers. Upgrade your game experience. Welcome to Game All Night! Well, hello and welcome to yet another Game All Night. Now, last week we just had our anniversary show, which was, I have to say, that was a lot of fun to put together. Um, and then, of course, on top of that tonight, we're recording on an off day. Uh, so not a little peek behind the curtain. So I had to call in our, our special standby bartender for the evening, Mr. Gil Mello. Mr. Gil, how are you doing tonight? Hello, hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Uh, I'm very fortunate that you live close and uh, and respond to short notice texts. I have to say, it's a sword of two eyes, right? It's a, it could be good. It could be bad. As well, you never know. Yeah. Well, well. Those of you who remember Gil, uh, he's dwarf token. He's been on the Dice Tower for a while. You do geek spiel. Like you do a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't sit around very long. <laughs> My wife says I keep finding things to just get my head out of the green wave. Yes, yes. She needs her time alone. I get it. Mine's like, enjoys it when I go in the basement and hide for a couple hours at a time. So I, I more than understand. But you also helped us out with Carla Cop's episode when she was on, which was pretty cool. So um, you, you came back and and you brought some beer. Um, I because did, I did. So... If, uh, I'm aware that's how I asked first if you were not lactose intolerant. <laughs> this beer has a lot of lactose. So the first beer, or oh, the beer that you were drinking is from uh, Windmill Brewing. Uh, so this is a tiki milkshake. It's milkshake mm. IPA. Uh, the reason it's called milkshake is uh, they use lacto. Lacto is like a, just a milk sugar to make to give a little more body to the beer and to give a little more sweetness. It's very common on stouts. Mm. Uh, just, you know break a little bit of that uh, bitterness. Um, and the one you have is a, a little hazy, so it's a New England IPA style. Uh, it's, I actually like this beer a lot. Um, I like it. It's got a little sour in there too. It's good. Yeah, because of the lacto. It's, it's mm -hmm. more sugary sour than the sour per se. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good uh, take on a New England IPA. And then, I'm, Unfortunately, I cannot take too much lacto, but I, that beer, I open an exception for it. It's a really good uh, <laughs> there for Wisconsin, yeah. So are you drinking the same thing with me, or do you have something no, else? No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm drinking uh, Yellow Rose. Uh, uh, Yellow Rose, uh, this is a, their uh, Smash uh, uh, IPA. Uh, Smash is uh, single malt, single uh, hop. That's why it's Smash SM. As age, uh, so it's it's like normally brewers try to uh, emphasize or put more color in one single uh, kind of pop in one single malt. Uh, this particular one has my second favorite pop, which is a uh, mosaic. I, I mm. love mosaic. Galaxy yeah, being my favorite, and mosaic being a very close second. Uh, so it's single malt, single hop. Uh, it's about seven percent. So you get like an explosion of uh, of uh, flavors on it. Uh, traditionally, smash IPs were done more to save money or to just emphasize the hop. Uh, but uh, American Ingenuity has done so much with uh, craft beer and beer in general in the past, you know, 20 years. And the flavor you get on a smash IP like this, uh, it's just amazing. So. Good job. Well, thanks for bringing them. They're they're pretty amazing. So I, I have to wonder. So we have on the show Mandy Hutchinson of. The Dice Tower, most most prominently, but also to die for games, and you do your Monday night streams. Like, yeah, I think I, I'd argue that there's a lot of hours each week devoted to content creation in this this room right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, most often the podcast, actually, that's the one where you know the chat happens, and then you're like, oh my goodness, um, work needs to happen. <laughs> so, right? Yeah, this would be it. So, are you drinking anything with us tonight, Miss Mandy? 
I sure am. I am not a huge drinker, but I do have a couple beers that I do enjoy. So let me show you from France, Cronenberg Blanc. Now, I don't know mm. if this is something that is familiar in the United States. I know I have a hard time ordering it, okay. um, but it is a lighter beer. So let me see. I'm not as well versed in the beer as uh, Gil, <laughs> but uh, it said not, not many fresh people and are. fruity. <laughs> I know. It was in so much detail. I'm like, fresh and fruity. It is a white beer. So there you go. I like that. It's on the lighter side. So that's okay. something I have between that or Fruly, one of the two. All right. And I like how it coordinates perfectly with the, the whole blue thing you got going on over here. Because like. Exactly. I had to match. Come on now. I know. It's 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 almost spot on. And and the color <laughs> thing. So we're going to have to get We're going to get into that later. I have I have a little surprise for you after the break. I oh. think we're going to we're going to play a little game. I think it's going to be funny, but we'll see. I, <laughs> So okay. These things are always a chance, you know, it's like, oh, dear, <laughs> should I be scared? I'm a little scared. Oh, you shouldn't be scared. If anything, we should be laughing at the end of it. I think I think it'll be a okay. it'll be a hoot. Now, now, for those of you at home may remember that um, I teased Mandy coming on the show probably in the the late summer last year. <laughs> But it, oh, it was oh, and it was no fault of her own. But the uh, it was just that the timing God said that that was not the time for us to record. Um, right. You know, sent thunderstorms up your way and just kind of made a whole hot mess. And then life gets in the way. And but here we are. And and I th yep. think it's it's like a fine wine that was allowed to age. I think that that we're going to benefit from this this long delay. What do you think? Absolutely. It's just, I think it has to be the right time. You, you can't force it. If you force it, then it's just not as good. So I think now we're in a good spot. It's going to be fabulous. Absolutely. So let's, let's kind of, let's kind of get in with that. And like, what is your last year, probably 18 months has been dramatically different. It, a lot of things have changed over the last 18 months for you as a creator. Cause before it was just kind of a very small segment on Board game breakfast, correct? With right. to, to die yeah, for right. games, you, you know, you and your yeah. team just kind of doing the little lunch games, which is awesome. I love the that way to game. That's great. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, now we're contributor to the dice tower. Now it's like, now you're going to all the cons. Like I'm kind of surprised that we were able to catch you that you weren't going to Dice Tower West yet. <laughs> oh no, that's that's next week. Or I know at the week after this. Yeah. <laughs> So you are just in high demand. So, and and it's not like you've left your job. You're still doing your full time teaching job, correct? I do. I work full time. So a lot of people forget, and I'm like, no, no. So doing all this other stuff is like a full time job, and then I actually have my full time job. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But it's actually a pretty interesting full time job because those of you who who do get to listen to the Dice Tower and listen to the episodes learn that you do do a lot of teaching that way. And I think it really comes through in how you present yourself and a lot of the things you talk about when you talk about games. Has that really influenced what kind of games you play and how they're played? A little bit, if that makes sense. I don't know. I was one of those kids, and I kind of got to back a little bit, if you don't mind. But no, no. the reason why I became a teacher was mm. I was very quiet as a child. I was an introvert. Like the t I was straight, a straight A student for the most part. But as soon as you mentioned presentation, I was like, uh, no, sorry, I'll take the zero. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. And um, I said, no, like as I got older, I was like, no, I need to pick a profession that I can speak publicly because I enjoy teaching and I love giving information. I love learning. Mm -hmm. How can I make that work? So I said, ah, oh, teacher, that's totally something I could do. And I had a math teacher tell me one time that I should never take math again. <laughs> because yeah i was like wow okay Ouch. <laughs> so i was like from that yeah so that just like solidified it that's it i'm gonna show her and i took math you know and i did fair i did decent i'm, I'm not a mathematician but I, I did well enough that you know i passed and i got decent grades and then that really solidified me saying i never want someone else to feel like that hmm. so you know feel like oh you can't do something we're not gonna be right. great at everything so that's when i said yeah i'm gonna do that so that's why when i talk about games i get really excited because it's something I can show other people. I can teach other people, hey, you don't have to be good at it to play it and have fun. And that was huge for me. And maybe that's why I also enjoy teaching games as, as well. Um, I like heavier games. And people go, really? Why? You know? And I'm like, because I like to figure them out. Do I win them all the time? Probably not. My friends will tell you my win ratio was fairly low. However, <laughs> I have fun doing it. And it's like a puzzle. I like to figure it out. And that's why I like those deep, heavy games. It makes me feel like, oh, 
this is great. Something for me to figure out and get better at. I like that. So long way around. That's, that's right. where we end up. So so do you think um, what, what I kind of take away from that is that it seems to me if somebody says, Mandy, you can't do this, that you kind of go, um, let me prove you wrong. <laughs> is that kind of has so. that been a theme? <laughs> oh, totally. So that's why, you know, when people talk about trolls and haters or just people being really negative, I'm like, this is me. I'm like, yes. <laughs> okay, how can we do this? You know, so I'm like, great. So they don't realize they're fueling the fire. <laughs> just because you should say something, it just kind of, there's there's that interesting kind of, that parallel, because some people will get put down. Like, how many times would a teacher say that to other people? And it would just kind of, it would stunt them and hold them back. And, and it would be, wait, but I, I love that that's something that you kind of said, and took it the other way and said, you took the challenge as it were. Right. <laughs> so the, um, so you became a teacher and not only do you teach, you have to teach in French too, because <laughs> you're, you're in Quebec. Is that correct? You're at... No, I'm in uh, Ontario, but Ontario okay. is what we call Bilang, which is uh, bilingual. So we have the two languages and working for the federal government. It is a requirement for my position. Gotcha. So you have yeah. to be, everything has to be in both languages all the time. Or have, right, and have the capability. So people, someone can speak to you in French and I can respond in English or vice versa. Either way, you basically should be able to uh, have a conversation or provide information to people in both official languages. Now, does that have any impact on, like, for instance, the board games that come up there? Do they have to be bilingual? Is it as strict as, I know Quebec is very strict about these things. Yes. So they have to have both provided at all times? So this is where it gets a bit tricky because <laughs> when you go to the western part of Canada, it's very uh -huh. English. This is where I'm from. I'm from Alberta originally, which is very mm -hmm. English. Um, so when I used to see board games, they used to come in. I would see often English only, but I definitely think it is um, preferable to have them in both languages. I know when I've talked to publishers, games coming into Canada, if, and someone may correct me if I'm wrong on this, but they do need to be in both languages. I know it's more expensive, that means, for us to get games right. because now they have to be produced in both languages or sometimes it's just French only and English only. But um, anytime I get games in Canada, they have uh, rules and the boards written out in both French and English. Interesting. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely something that I think is, it's interesting that it still stays steep to this day. It's like they're not you refuse to be homogenized and say, all right, well, fine, it's going to be English. They, they want to hold on to that, that French speaking heritage. And I love that because I think it's very yeah. neat. And then of course it makes, makes it feel like little Paris when you do go up and <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's all those, those great things, the great food and everything else. It's not just, you know, how many different types of poutine can we get? It's actually <laughs> kind of a little bit more involved than that. Right. And there's different types of French. There's um, the Quebecois, and then you have the Acadian, which is you're getting into like the um, New Brunswick type area. So it's a different okay. type of French. Like there are different types, and they in themselves have their own culture. Do you know what I mean? So I'm, mm -hmm. I've been blessed that I have friends who are Francophone or Franco-Ontarian, which is they're French, but they live in Ontario, not necessarily Quebec. And it's great because you get to learn the different nuances. So I think that's cool in itself. So. Yeah, and I think it's something that we as Americans kind of take for granted, right? We don't really, we don't understand that as well because, you know, yes, there's pockets of culture. You know, we can go into right. a city and we can find little Chinatown, whatever. We can find those little pockets and we feel proud of ourselves because, you know, we can go there and we can sure. see all these other cultures. But I think it's really, it's not a core component of our culture to kind of cross-pollinate cultures like that. And I think that that's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, so teaching a game in French is difficult <laughs> just because I use you know at work it's like bonjour tout le monde je m'appelle Mandy Hutchinson you know like it's very like je travaille aux ressources humaines like it's very work oriented so right. when I have to do something for a game it's not terminology that I'm ne necessarily familiar mm. with so I have it's difficult because some of the terminology I'm not 100%. And keep in mind, like, I'm very Anglophone. I'm very English. So right. <laughs> I don't know all the nuances yet. So, yeah, it does. I've done it, but it's difficult. The reason I ask is because I had a uh, funny situation where uh, we had some friends, friends from France, and they were here, and they were teaching their kids some games to have in the house. 
and the amount of English he was using to express movements and things, and I realized, hmm, maybe English is, you know, mostly used even in other languages. I know the same happens to German with Germans, like how they use English terms to terms to to teach games. That's what I was hmm. wondering. I oh. <laughs> so yes, that happens. Um, and there's differences too between French from like from France, French from Canada. Sure. There are a lot more English terms in French from France. I'm not saying a ton, but there are more anglicized words. That doesn't mean that people don't use it all the time. Like we do it at work all the time. If I need something scan, scan that for me, you know, like scan it. And I'm like, that's not actually the proper terminology, but we'll throw in right. some English. Not everybody loves that. I get that. <laughs> but yeah, it does happen where you throw in a bit of English. Right, but it's it's the end result, right? Are you communicating and are you able to get done what you need to get done? Right. It gets tough. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. And Gil would know because he also has to teach Portuguese, which is like Spanish, but it's not. <laughs> and it's from Brazil, so it's even more separate than actual Portuguese. Yeah. I, yeah, Wait. I'm part Portuguese and I... Let me get this out of the way. I do not speak it. I maybe <laughs> understand a little bit. My grandfather's rolling over in his grave right now. He's so disappointed. <laughs> interviewed with Tala Sarada one time and we tried to talk in Portuguese to each other. It was surprising how hard it was for us to talk to each other. We realized how not that similar both languages were unless we were talking kind of a slow pace. Right, because he's from Portugal and right. you're from Brazil, so you're you're far enough removed that it's it's completely different almost. But I just did uh, I just did a video not too long ago for Terror Below. So my the first ever French language uh, teach and play, I guess, or teach video uh, for Terror Below by Renegade Games on Dice Tower in French. I did it in English and I did it in French. Uh huh. That was something. And I know there were a couple of people who were like, oh, you know, I'm not sure about the accent and stuff. But these are also people that are not from Canada, so it sounds okay. completely different for them. But I got I got to make a shout out though. My French Canadians or anybody French speaking, you were a great. It was great. The positivity, people were so supportive. Thank you. That's all I got to say. So it was awesome. It's interesting. I I love this. There's this kind of um, there there's a surgeons right now, and and Terry, I, I this is kind of what brought this on because I saw you did post about the terror below, and I don't want to say the struggle, but the the effort it yeah. took. To, to kind of make that happen, right? And then Rodney Smith starts doing ASL on yes. his videos. It's amazing. But I, I'm just, I'm loving this kind of, this trend toward, okay, we've opened a lot of doors. Let, let, let's knock a few more down while we're at it here, right? right. Absolutely. Because you can find these, the German playthroughs, you can find different, you know, flavors of playthroughs. But then to, to see main, I, I, I don't want to like, belittle the term, but like mainstream high volume people starting to accept yeah. some of these other methods I find is just very cool. And it's Rodney could be just happy with subtitles like, you know, they work. But no, the fact that it kind of we, we took it to the next level, I think I think he really did that. No, oh, it's great. I, I, I love it. I, I was this is something I wanted to push forward at some point doing that sort of thing. Um, because I used to do work on a show called Challenges and Change, and we had different people Ooh. that came on. Uh, yeah, and uh, we had different people who came on who, you know, needed ASL, people who, um, you know, had different challenges that they were, you know, and they had overcome them be, by being Olympians or, you know, any sort of thing that was just, people would go, oh my goodness, you could do that? And it's like, of course I can do that. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I said, this is something I'd love to bring into board games. I just, with time, and then I need to, you know, set up. I didn't have that capability, so sure. I think it's wonderful that, uh, that uh, Ronnie's starting to do that, so. It's a it's a whole nother area and a whole nother group of people that, yeah. you know, will now be exposed, right? Absolutely. And anytime we can do that with our hobby, we're gonna be we're gonna be the better for it. I agree. Awesome. I agree. All right. Well, you know what? This sounds like a great place to take a quick break and ruin your day with this amazing pun by Mr. Patrick Hillier. So I make no promises and I apologize in advance, but Come on, they're pretty good, you gotta admit. So, we'll be right back after this. Pontifications with Patrick Hillier. A bear walks into a restaurant and says, I want a grilled cheese. The waiter says, what's with the paws? And the bear says, what do you mean? I'm a bear. 
Welcome back. I hope you're, you've recovered from the stitches necessary with that amazing, amazing work. And special thank you to Mr. Patrick Hillier for the, uh, the constant stream of puns that make up the show. So I am here with Miss Mandy. Now, now, Mandy, you are, I mean, come on, we're looking at a dress form behind you, you know, like this is, this is definitely a huge part of your life. Um, and I, I kind of want to play with this. So we're, we're going to play a little game and it's going to be called, is it a nail polish color or is it a board game? All right. So Miss Mandy, I thought we could play a little game that's called, is it a nail polish color or is it a board game? What do you think? Do you think you could, uh, we could find some fun in here? <laughs> Well, we find it very interesting because, uh, you know, I get my nails done, so oh. I have no idea. Just go, I want that one. So this should be fun if I actually can do well on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I kind of, I kind of got this for my wife because she gets her nails done as well, and she oh, always she comes back. Yes, she does, and she always comes back with these crazy names. So, I, I kind of thought there might be a little fun activity in here. So, all right. How this is just going to work is we're just going to pop up a name. And uh, I just want you to tell me if it's a, a if you think it's a nail polish color or if you think it's the title of a board game. All right. So, um, all the colors I will let you know are, are from the OP website for those of you, not the overpowered, the OPI um, website. <laughs> <laughs> and all the board games are from BGG. So I didn't go crazy trying to find them. So, no, so ghosts love candy. Is that... <laughs> A nail polish, or is that a board game? That totally sounds like it could be a board <laughs> game, but I think it's a nail polish color. So, so Gil, what do we say? Oh, I was right. It was a board game. <laughs> See, this is already a lot of fun. I already, I'm already enjoying this. All right, this is great. <laughs> and there's a lot of that. I, I'm, I'm literally going to say it could be a board game, but it's this. <laughs> I'll pack up my bags. Is that a nail polish color or is it a board game? <laughs> I'm sticking strong. I'm going to say nail polish. All right. Nail polish it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I actually think I have this nail color. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do like it. I do like it. It's It's got that nice teal quality going on there. Yeah. Pretty. <laughs> I, you know, so from what I understand, a lot of the colors are picked in themes and then they just start yes. making, they just make like runs of puns on themes. So That's I think exactly if, uh, what they do. yep. And, and they're great. All right. Next up we have hugs and tickles. <laughs> wow. This could actually go either way. <laughs> I, I'm, I think, um. Yeah, I'm. It's uh, no. I think it's a nail polish. Okay, is the third time a charm? It is not. No! It's actually. Okay. <laughs> That's a game. I, I like the board with the rainbows on it, and you know, it's like I don't know what jail is specifically in Hugs and Tickles, but I don't know if I want to go to Hugs and Tickles jail. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I feel like this game was made before like 1990 or something. Because oh, definitely. There's no. <laughs> there's no way. Let's put it this way. When I was looking for games, I started at the bottom and worked my way up. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> All right. So let's try another one. Clubbing oh. till sunrise. Okay. Well, now for sure, that is that is for sure a nail polish color. That is not a board mm. game. I, I'm inclined to agree, but I also have yeah, inside no. <laughs> information. So it yeah, is indeed. Is, I was definitely for sure on that one. <laughs> You know, like that, 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 that's definitely makes sense. Yes. Yes. You may have worn that at some point in the past, potentially. Probably. I don't know. That color kind of go matches my skin tone. So I don't know if it'd be great. Oof. Fair enough. All right. Are we there yet? We know it's a movie. <laughs> it a is television a television yes, show. I know. <laughs> um, let's go board game, but it could go either way, really, to be honest. Okay. Final answer board game. It is a nail polish. See? <laughs> and in my mind, I was like, it's a nail polish. I'm like, no, they're tricking me. It's a board game. <laughs> there you go. Annoying. 
Annoying teenagers who don't take enough bathroom breaks. Fair enough. Exactly. I guess just, I'm <laughs> horrific at this game. <laughs> Llamas in pajamas. Yeah, I'm going to go board game on that one. Hmm. It is a game. I'm going to have to put the picture in here, but no, Llamas in pajamas is most definitely a game, and it looks exciting. And um, unfortunately, there's only a couple games named after llamas. I was kind of disappointed. That's true, actually. Not very many. I've seen alpacas, but not too right. many with llamas. So yeah. I, I think we need to, we need to, if there's an underserved market in the world, I think it's, you know, the the large woolly animal contingent. Exactly. So exactly. we'll have to work on that one. <laughs> Sheep are well served, but, you know. Ab uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Overdone the sheer almost. number of sheep. Ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. So what's our next one there, Gil? Chopsticks and stones. Oh, dear. You know, I did well, this. Like, if it were a nail polish color, it totally looks like something that would be like putty colored if it were. Or like sure. a gray putty. Um, the fact that there's a spelling change in chopsticks makes me kind of go toward a nail color because they tend to do that a lot. Okay. Uh, I, I like the reasoning idea, also, out here. I like this. this right? Is, you know, I feel <laughs> it like, you know. sounds like it could totally be a game. <laughs> Would you like to phone I'm a so friend? <laughs> I know. Lifeline. Okay, I'm going to go with the game, but I could totally see it being like a putty-colored nail polish. But game All right. Is. No! It was a nail polish. And it's bright blue. Like, I was, you had me on the putty color, too. But I did, like... Yeah, that's not what I would have thought at all. I think this is nope. a bad name choice. <laughs> I, I think that might be said of a lot of these, but. <laughs> 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 all right. I think there's a couple left. Um, the Fluffy Bunny Tea Party. Oh, that's a game. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no doubt. <laughs> like, do you even know who makes it? That's actually probably it's just, the... the length of it would just be too long for a nail polish bottle. <laughs> okay. It would have to go all the way around the cap on the right. top. Okay. All right. <laughs> you, you have me on this one. So it is definitely a game. Apartment for two. That sounds like a nail polish color. <laughs> I, I think she's catching on here. I, I think so. All right. All right, Gil, what is it? It is, Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I might even have this. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was amazed that the I mean there are hundreds and hundreds of like man, there's a lot of no, different colors. Let's just leave it. Oh at no, that. there's a ton. I think I have about a hundred. I don't really use any of them, but yeah. <laughs> Do you ever buy any just for the name? Because now I gotta know because these are these are great. I'm trying to I've done that with lipsticks. I've okay. done that with lipstick. I'm like, oh, because my friend, I have a friend, her brother names lipsticks for a company. <laughs> I, so so yeah. we're right up, right up that alley. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Mr. Gill, frog juice. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. If that were a nail polish color, I don't think anybody would buy it. Hmm. But it would depend on the company. If we're talking <laughs> wet and wild, yes. OPI, they're kind oh, of in no. a different... Uh, I'm going to go with a game on this one. Okay. Game? Oh, yes. Yeah. It, is most, <laughs> it is most certainly, yeah. I, I just, I, I love the bottle. I think that that was kind of. <laughs> Maybe it was trying to be the nail polish color. I, 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 I can see that. The... I can see yeah. that. I don't, <laughs> yeah, no, I got nothing. I don't really, it's a clever game of spells and concoctions for ages eight and up. So, Could all right. Be. All right, so Alcatraz rocks. Oh, nail color. I have it. I'm pretty sure I have this nail color. I uh, If this is not a nail color, I, that's it. Oh, no. That's a nail polish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I have this. <laughs> I, lo I love the glitter, too. Like, I should know. It's right up your alley. It's got the dark it purple is. in it. It's, like, perfect. I have this. I have this. <laughs> well done. I like it. And I believe this is our last one, Sparkle Kitty. So this I know is a game because there's a character I've been told when my hair was silver that I looked exactly like her. So this is there the you game. go. <laughs> it most certainly is. So there you go. So what what did you think, Mandy? Was that was that a little fun? It was fun. It was a little rusty because I haven't picked a <laughs> I haven't looked at a nail polish 
polished color in forever, but <laughs> I think I picked up the pace at the end there. <laughs> no, you did great. You did great. And, uh, you know, just, just so you know at home, we completely sprung that on you. You had no idea what was coming. <laughs> and I think that's what kind of makes it fun. Like, so. Yeah. When friends stare at you and even glare at you, tapping toes, wrapping fingers, when you ask whose turn it is and hear the dreaded, it's been yours for two minutes, anxiety and fear can paralyze you in that moment. If you've struggled with analysis paralysis before, if you've tried other medications and nothing seems to help, now there's Analpar a new analysis paralysis alternative. Independent studies have shown that Analpar's unique properties stimulate the brain's neurotransmitters more gently than other medications. Several study participants report relief of analysis paralysis symptoms within as little as two weeks. You deserve to feel the warmth, to feel present in the moment, to be free, to be yourself again. You deserve an analysis paralysis alternative when nothing else has worked. You deserve Analpar. Though users of this medication experience less side effects than with other common medications, side effects may still include dry mouth, sudden outbursts of puns, lack of future planning, itchiness, temporary confusion, considerably more losses, temporary euphoria, and death. Be sure to check out this week's media creator shout-out, Pair of Dice Paradise, featuring Chaz Marler. Check him out on YouTube and wherever fine podcasts are sold. All right. So so that was definitely interesting, getting to play some some of the nail polish colors, which, you know, guys, I'm telling you, if if you know nothing of this world, it it's it's a deep deep, dark rabbit hole to go down to look at some of these names. They are absolutely <laughs> hysterical. They like, are. I love that. And you said that there's also like, you know, lipstick companies that do that as well. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of but They have a collection, too. Like they'll have the names like, you know, Tan on the Beach or, you know, Sandstone or Starfish or something like that. They'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll kind of have a collection that you're right, that their names kind of all names that encompass the theme. So, right. yeah, it's very common. So, so you definitely know firsthand because the other thing, if I were to say I know about you and my limited amount of knowledge is, you know, <laughs> you obviously trade yourself as the board game pinup and, you know, yep. you love the, the nostalgia and, you know, the, the, I would guess would be the, the forties and fifties kind of style. Is that fair? Um, anywhere between forties and sixties, probably anywhere okay. between there. Yeah. So where did this come from? So this actually started, I had a friend, um, she goes by the name Shade, um, and she does burlesque and she does some other things. And we just had this, uh, this happened maybe a few, maybe four years ago or so. Okay. And and she's also a makeup artist and I just loved her style, her confidence. And we just had this, it, it was weird. It kind of, we talked about inclusivity and then we talked about how um, her, she's a uh, Lebanese, uh, ethnicity, she's Lebanese. And she was saying, you know, that was kind of something that really pushed her to go into the the pinup or rockabilly world and i'm like really is that thing and it's just we looked back at the times right and uh -huh. we said hey like the way she might have been treated or might have been treated may not be cool but we really liked the style and we kind of wanted to empower it for our groups i don't know if that makes mm -hmm. sense but just kind of make it something like hey it's for everybody everybody can be beautiful, be beautiful. everybody can pull off the style and i just love the classic feel of it where you don't have to show a ton of skin to, mm -hmm. you know, to look nice or to be, to be pretty, you show a little bit of ankle. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's sexy. <laughs> so, but you know what I mean? But it was just, it was something that I could feel comfortable in, um, but still doing something at the same time. Like that era was a time where, you know, black people were not looked at as very pretty. And it's like, no, you can't be pin up. And it's like, well, no, I am going to be a pin up and I'm going to put my own take on it and I'm going to do it and look great. And that's <laughs> kind of where it stemmed from. So my friend Shade is the one who actually pushed me toward it. And she's been really supportive and um, she's amazing. She just gives it her all and beyond. So yeah, that's how that started. So how much is it, um, is it like enjoying being a character or is it more just embracing the style and being the uniqueness that all comes out of it? What exactly is kind of that? What's the best part of it for you? I just, I'm able to, it 
bring it into me. Like, so I have a, mm-hmm. a way that I am, but it kind of complements that. And then I kind of put my own twist on it. So, you know, I have the blue hair and when it's all done up and stuff, I kind of do those styles, but then make it more, I guess, modern, maybe okay. that's the way to do it. So like behind me, it's kind of hard to see, but all the little pins and stuff that are on that form are all vintage. All right. So I try and pull that into something, you know, like a pinup, modern pinup kind of style that I'd wear. So it kind of just complements me, so to speak. <laughs> right, exactly. And do you think that having something that's so obviously unique about yourself, does that help like people be able to come talk to you? Does it give you like talking points? Because it's always hard to walk up to people at conventions and, okay, I can talk about what you do. But when you have something that's kind of outside that, do you find that that really helps kind of open that channel of communication up faster? It depends. (laughs) (laughs) I think people think it's hard to talk to me in general. I I still don't know why. Like, do I look mean? I don't think I do this. (laughs) You know, I think I have... A nice space, but um, I know when I did some work for Geek and Sundry, it was like, oh, I really like your style. We started talking about pinup. We talked about the scene, like the whole pinup Mm -hmm. rockabilly scene in LA. And I was like, it's huge. It's like, oh my goodness. So that was really great for people coming up to talk to me and stuff. I thought it was great. I find this, I get a lot of people that say I was nervous to talk to you. And I thought maybe having this kind of fun style might encourage people to ask questions, like what you were just saying. But people get nervous. And and I was talking to Suzanne. I'm like, am I me? I don't want to be mean. I feel like people don't want to talk to me. She's like, well, sometimes I think people might be intimidated. And she didn't mean that in a bad way at all. But she's like, she's so sweet. She's like, you're pretty. And you know, you're a nice person. But like, I mean, that's a lot for people to, you know, they don't know how it's going to be perceived. They just come up and talk to you. And, and I, I, and I get it. So I thought, yes, it would be a good talking point, but apparently it might be overwhelming for some. Well, I, but I would argue that that if a person's having difficulty, I don't think that that's going to add to it. I think it's, if anything, I think it's going to help take something away. Like, I think that they, it should make it easier, right? Because, you know, yeah. it gives us something to kind of talk about, ask more questions about. It's not just, oh, so you played these games. What'd you think? You know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I've already told you three times what I think. And I showed a video that showed what I think. And it's my number eight <laughs> game of all time. So I'm pretty right. sure you know everything I feel about that one thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whereas, exactly. you know, right. But what, what kind of choices, like... Like if you had your choice, like you have the board game conventions happening on one side of the hall and then there's, you know, a rockabilly kind of convention happening on the other side where there's vintage vendors and things, you know, what's what's the choice? Where do you go? Uh, (laughs) That's when you kind of just have to maneuver your time a little bit, you know, (laughs) do a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B or, hey, try and make it work together. (laughs) Exactly. Or, you know, it's like, well, I do this all the time. This I don't get to do, you know, because I'm sure cruising the shops and looking through, it's very similar to, you know, when I was a kid, mom used to antique. I mean, much different kind of vintage and much older, obviously. No, no, I used to do that too. So I I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like rummaging through and like, you know, trying to find. Did you go to auctions? Yep. Yep. Trying yep, to find did those two. <laughs> trying to find the bargains or trying to find the <laughs> the unique items that maybe may have a story to it that you don't know about, right? And that's what that's what these things are designed. I think that they're really kind of we we try to design these things so that people do feel comfortable coming up. I I had somebody tell me once that they felt awkward coming up to me and I'm like, "Me? Really?" <laughs> like I <laughs> I, I get it. I'm like, I'm six, five, I'm a giant. And, you know, I right. know that that can be off putting, but at the same time, I'm like, me? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a big teddy bear who, who I will lean and sit a lot to make you feel comfortable. So <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing too, is like, you know, guys, don't be afraid, you know, to come up to people in the business and at least just say, hi, say, thank you, plant a seed and then come back later. Yeah. If the timing's not right, you know, it's, you know, I met Mandy when you were working, uh, I believe, at the Renegade booth, um, mm-hmm. and it just kind of popped by and said hi. You know, I think I gave you a muffin at PAX. I think probably. Was, I think that's what it was. I was, I was more walking. Food, I probably was. Yeah, I probably took it. <laughs> hey, it, it's it's my introduction piece, right? I walk around handing out food, uh, not candy, just food. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> But, you know, it's like, you know, just just at least say hi. And then, you know, it, if you can have more of a conversation, have it. But but be happy if that's all you get, because that's all the time that they might have to give too. you know, it's 
you know, we all want to talk. We're, we're in this business to talk to people. We're not, I mean, like literally that's what we're here to do. <laughs> but I did a video not too long ago. Sorry, my eye keeps uh, watering. Um, I did a video not too long ago with um, Chaz Marler. So, ah. from, you know, you all know Chaz, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we did a video and talked about conventions. And so a lot of people have a hard time believing that I am actually more on the introvert side. I mean, yeah, I have a character and um, something that I put forth. It's still me, but that's a mm -hmm. bit more interactive. And um, so, yeah, I get it where people are like, oh, you know, I just don't know if I should come up and say hi. I'm really shy. I get it. After I go to a convention, there's a certain point where I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I need to like not be around people because it's like uh -huh. my batteries have drained and I need to go and recharge and not maybe be around so many people. So I can understand some of the hesitations that people might have. So if you haven't watched the video, definitely take a look at it. You'll get a better idea of me and even Chaz. And Chaz and I worked really well together because I love organization and so does he. And, you know, these are things that kind of keep us on track. So mm -hmm. looks are deceiving. So uh, that's why I encourage people to, hey, let's have a conversation. Or, hey, if you know ahead of time you're going to come and you're worried about doing it in front of a ton of people, send me an email. Say, hey, Mandy, I'd like to meet you. What time are you at the booth? And, and you know, try and make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's funny how many people who do what we do that are kind of introverted. And it is, mm -hmm. you know, believe it or not, that this really, even though we're putting it out there and, you know, the tens of people that are going to watch, you know, it's, it is cool and it's amazing. But for some reason, when you're in the moment, it's not there. It's like, you know, we're just talking about something we love. And I think that the two things that kind of get you over over the introvert hump are talking about things you're passionate about and with right. people you enjoy. And, you know, right. let's face it, a lot of the people in the hobby are good and it's very easy to talk to. So yeah, that helps. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. It totally does. <laughs> and, and if you're, and you, you said something earlier that kind of struck with the, the difficult, longer and more in depth games. And if you don't like losing, then don't play because, you know, 75% <laughs> of people who play lose, right? <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> so you got to get comfortable with so. exactly. So it's kind of like you're you're just it's the same thing, you know. We're we're all kind of in this. We're all learning together, and we're all trying to get something fun out of it. So yeah. I totally agree. So this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed getting to know you even more, and I I can't wait till next week because next week we're going to play a little game, and I know it's in your top games of all time oh. because you know I did my homework. So no, you're gonna you have to. We're going to have to tune in next week for that. But in the meantime, Mandy, where can people find you if they're they're looking for you on the, the internets and things? On the interwebs. Well, actually, I'll start off with my email. That's the easiest one. So if you're looking, just want to drop me a line, have a quick question or something you want to hear on the podcast with myself and Suzanne on the Dice Tower, you can send me uh, an email at Mandy, that's Mandy with an I, at Dicetower.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Board Gamer Pinup and on Instagram at Board Gaming Pinup Girl. You can also find me on Monday nights coming back soon on the Dice Tower for our <laughs> live playthroughs. And that's Michael and Mandy Play at gmail.com if you ever want to drop us a line or if there's a game you'd like to see. Absolutely. So I highly recommend you check it out and check out all of Mandy's. And you can also catch her every other week on the Dice Tower podcast with Suzanne which is really fun and it's even oh. there it's also super fun too when you cross over with with the boys <laughs> and they kind of come and play in your sandbox I think that's fun <laughs> well we have something else I almost forgot because it hasn't launched yet but it's coming oh. in the next few weeks the uh, digital show that Suzanne and I are doing Okay. Um, yeah. So we haven't announced the name yet we will be announcing it and this is where we're going to play live on air um, board game show on Steam Tabletopia, things like that, or apps. Um, so we're delving into the digital world. So coming soon. I think it's right up your alley because, you know, yeah. it works. You guys are across the, you know, halfway across the country from yeah. each other. So <laughs> that's how you game when you can't game next door. Awesome. Exactly. So thank you so much for being on, Mandy. Thank you, Gil, for being our, our generous beer benefactor of the evening. It has been a lot of fun. So... So be sure to pick a funny name for yourself the next time you game all night. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Join us next week when we play a game with the guests. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Be sure to follow us on all forms of social media. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are the best ways possible. Simply find us by searching for Game All Night Show. And of course, check out our website at 
GameAllNightShow.com. This week and each week is made possible through the generous support of donors like these. Be sure to subscribe below and check out our latest videos. Picture? Oh, please. I, I, I have to remember it. to do that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll post it on Twitter or something if you don't mind. Oh, no, not at all. You're still here? It, it's over. Go home. Go home. <laughs>